Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to, in 15 minutes, I hope, gallop through um, a few slides and introduce you to and highlight some aspects of the non-traditional aspects of the library with which you may not be familiar and which um, are in the complementing the theme of today's symposium. Um, to start with a busy slide that I suppose reflects a bit like what the President was talking about earlier, um, using online learning, all the buzzwords you would see and the comp components and there are a lot of them. Um, I'm going to give you an overview um, uh, on the first half there on online support that we provide in the library, um, the module better referred to, talk about our, institution, our the university's institutional repository and some digital projects we have ongoing, uh, the electronic research library. Um, and then in, uh, in the afternoon, my colleague Anita Wilcox is going, go, going to go through with you the lower part. Um, so the online support that the library provides in general moves from the library system, which is Millennium. We do all our processes on it. We have proximity access just to get into the library. We have mechanical book sorters, self-issue and returns. Uh, we have over 400 PCs in the library and of course it's a wireless environment. Uh, we have, the Cora is the, and I'll speak to that in a moment, is the university's institutional repository. And at the moment we're piloting e-thesis submission um, with the assistance of the Graduate Studies Office where we would like even to take this opportunity to encourage you to invite all your PhDs to uh, publish on Quora. And of course you can follow everything we do on social media, Facebook and Twitter. Now I'm just going to have one slide on the physical aspects of the library uh, which um, we're the subject information and research support is provided on the upper floors of the Boole Library um, in, in this format here and of course in the two branch libraries of camp offsite which are at the University Hospital in Wilton and in the, at the Brookfield Complex. Each of these has its own information desk and the usual books and surrounds and PCs and so on and group study, group research rooms and so on. But what I really want to show you then is how this works online and you may not be familiar with this. This is uh, Rona Madden, our Arts, Humanities and Multimedia Librarian, and he manages the top floor in the Boole, which is the human Arts and Humanities floor. So online you have available here to you all of the subject areas for which Ronan is responsible, and he provides the best of the resources available electronically uh, to anybody who uses the portal there. And for instance, the, he has picked out the library databases for research. You're familiar with some of them there, JSTOR, which we now, by the way, have just bought the full collection of, the only university in Ireland to do so. We have a collection of library e-journals and, of course, e-books and so on that you might not be familiar with there. We're often asked that, do we have any e-books? So, uh, on the far side there, you see study and research, with which you might not be familiar either. We are developing um, daily. What we put up on this, so for instance, you have, we have tutorials, online tutorials there. Um, you can see there how to, how to find the best database for your assignment, the full text of a journal article. We use the Captivate software. It's very simple, but it's very effective. Students like using it. Uh, we, we use, obviously, and connect you to the free tutorials on the web here. Um, now, our information literacy skills teaching uh, encompasses four areas from library orientation, which we provide uh, on demand to anybody. And obviously we concentrate on the incoming first years. And this year we introduced seven generic skills, I suppose you would call them, workshops to enable students to get started, a kind of a survival package for the undergraduates there. With the help of Patrick, we're going to start putting those up, um, filming them, podcasting them, making them available online. Uh, and this hopefully will all build in, probably we're, we're started on it and we'll be working on it, I hope for next year, but it may take a little bit longer. And the object will be to, or the objective will be to have an undergraduate generic skills module 
But again, can I emphasise here, we can't just do that on our own in the library. We need, we're already working with the VP for student experience, we're working with the computer centre, but we need all the academics on board. For a quick example, we provided those workshops, we are still providing them, but the, the best attendance was when we worked with the geography department where they required their 400 students to come along at timetabled times, so it's embedded in part of the curriculum. Uh, we give classes at all levels to the various different undergraduates. We have our own research skills teaching room where we provide this. Um, we do them standalone or embedded in the curriculum and there, some of them are, are formal and credit bearing and assessed. And just to show you um, again the emphasis here is to say that the library, um, we would say, but it is true, you need the library. It is really central to all of the online education that all of you are providing. And I think we would say that the, what we have available isn't always known. So we would like to just send that message out today. And to just a little interpretation of that, the knowledge content and interface there would be something like Blackboard in our case. Then you have the library, so you have the teacher, you have the student, there's interaction both ways. You have the search and retrieval tutorials and so on down there. So, I mean, I don't have to go through it with you, but you can see you need, of all, you need all of those components and we need to be much more connected than we are now. And I find in the work I do that I discover every day there are great things going on in different areas, but there's no joining of the dots. So we need to work more closely. Again, success will be dependent on we have face-to-face -face learning, all of you have face-to-face -face learning, we have online collaborative learning, self-paced learning, and so on. But you need the intersection of the sets there for success. Now, this is our Graduate Information Literacy Skills module which was developed courtesy of funding from the government, the SIF funding. It is a Credit 5 ECTS module. We have, we piloted it in 2008. We delivered it in real time in the next two academic years to targeting PhDs in the science, technology and medicine area initially. This year we adapted it for the College of Arts, Culture Studies and Social Sciences. We're delivering now on the 21st to the 24th of November there. Uh, can I just say again here that the success and the attendance rates are really based on working with the graduate schools concerned and in particular with Alan Kelly in the, the Director of Graduate Studies. And we worked very closely with supervisors. We, the students will come. The, the module is obviously optional and they, there are a lot of other options there for the PhDs to take but when they're advised by their lecturers or their supervisors obviously they will come along more readily. We just have I suppose two sessions full. We have that one full uh, for CACs in November and we have a waiting list so we would probably have to deliver several times there. Now we've broken them up then. The block delivery suits some people. We did evaluation and feedback and the students like to get a block delivery but then of course when you start you find that they have something going on one of the mornings one of the afternoons so they can't attend them all attend the credits are awarded on the basis of attendance plus an assessment so what we then did is break up the units into research skills workshops which the students can take at their own pace and you can take those for interest or you can accumulate credit over the time. Again, we'll be advertising those on our website shortly, the dates of those. The assessment that we have built in learning outcomes for, each, for the overall module and for each of the units. And our assessment is based on interrogating those learning outcomes which we provide in advance to the students, according to Declan Kennedy's very wonderful book on learn, preparing learning outcomes. Um, we, at the moment, it, the assessment is only available, or the awards are only available for the face-to-face -face version, but there we just need to, the online version is available at www.informationliteracy.ie, which, which is hosted at the HEA net. Um, you can't get credit by doing the online only, and of course, I shouldn't be saying that today because this is probably what we're here today to do, but we have started developing that where we, I, Patrick is thankfully working with us to take this. You had, we had three universities developing it. When the project finishes, as you know, 
and each university goes its own way, difficulties arise. So we're at the stage where we need to, to take this down, get a copy of this down, and um, build it in and make it available online. Um, it has online registration. Yeah, I'm nearly there. This is what it looks like. A TG Cahar actress actually introduces each unit and tells you the learning outcomes. Um, the units are all down here. Um, it's very interactive content here. This is an example of the shape of the literature. And obviously, if you hover over each of these, it gives very detailed explanation of the various forms of literature that students need to use. Um, these are the seven units. You can see those. Again, the very obvious thing. What P students, PhDs really like is the publishing and disseminating, and we have the academic people concerned. In CACS, it's Professor ben, um, Brendan Dooley and Dr. Dennis Inahan, and in STM, it's Alan Kelly himself talking about the experience of publishing and getting published in, in those areas. This unit is optional for CACs using archives for research. Uh, it's on the Book of Modules in UCC. Oh, I just want to quickly say, I don't know if you're aware of IRL, again, a consortium of seven universities. These are all research resources available online. And again, this is a case of use or lose. The government funding is shrinking each year. It's about to come the grant again this year, and we may lose some resources. So you may see emails coming out from us again to ensure you use these online resources, or we lose them. Um, CORA, um, you'll be familiar with, is the, uh, the institutional repository for the university. Some interesting digital projects. We are nearly finished digitizing the George Boole papers, a book map project there and a very interesting audio recording of Irish Immigrants to USA, the O'Neill Wax Cylinder Project. Um, won't go through that, just some resources that you can get on the thing. And in the afternoon, a quarter past one, Anita will tell you the rest. Thanks, and sorry for rushing. Thank you, Martha. That was a truly informative presentation. Thank you very much.